The Jews were forbidden, if you remember, to have anything to do with uncircumcised Gentiles. Hence, under any circumstance, Peter would not have been able to follow anybody to the house of a Gentile, whether they believe in Christ or not. When God now told him that since he is the one who created both Jew and Gentile, both white and black, both Chinese and Mexican, no one must be looked upon as inferior or less privileged to receive the grace of God. When Peter got to the house of Cornelius, he had not yet finished telling them about Jesus Christ when the unexpected visitation happened. The room was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and descended upon all the household of Cornelius in the same manner. The disciples received it on the day of Pentecost. And Peter had no option but to baptize them all immediately. Peter had this to say when he was queried by his fellow Christians, Jews, brothers back in Jerusalem. Why? He had betrayed the brotherhood by baptizing Gentiles. In Acts of Apostle 11, 15 to 18, he said, and I be as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them like gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who am I? What was I? That I will withstand God. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then had God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Praise God. Amen. God's word and God's presence. Why God continue to reveal himself through Jesus Christ and his signs and miracles. Even Jesus saw guidance through simple prayer, spending hours at a time seeking his Father. When Jesus returned to heaven, he promised the coming of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, who would direct and guide believers. Throughout history since the new covenant sealed by Jesus' death and resurrection, God has continued to offer personal guidance in a variety of ways. But his promise of guidance comes through his word and his Holy Spirit. God has made his will clear to us in his word and through his Holy Spirit. Guidance also through others. The scriptures speak not only of God's guidance, but also of determining God's path for us through the guidance of others. The writer of Proverbs claimed to receive guidance through the influence of parents. As we also read in Proverbs 6, 20 to 22, he said, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart, and tie them around thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleep, it shall keep thee. And when thou awake, it shall talk with thee. Amen. Proverbs also encourages his leaders, his readers to seek the counsel of wise people. We must seek the counsel of wise people. And we also read in Proverbs 15, 21 to 22, Folly is joy to him who lacks sense. But the man of understanding walks straight without consultation. Plans are frustrated. But with many counselors, they succeed. And now as we have wise counsel, we also have ungodly counsel. We have ungodly guidance. Just as people seek God's guidance, so many also seek guidance from many other sources. 
throughout the Old Testament. We have mediums. We have diviners that were used to make decisions. If you remember the story of great King Saul, himself, he sought guidance from a medium and was judged for it. In 1 Samuel 28, 4 to 19, in verse 15, it's right here, <clears throat> after the Spirit of God had departed from King Saul, he went to meet a medium to summon up the ghost of Prophet Samuel for consultation. If you remember, when we ask ourselves, who said it? To whom was it said? Why was it said that obedience is better than sacrifice? It was said by Prophet Samuel to King Saul. When King Saul disobeyed God's instruction, and then God rejected him and anointed King David to replace him. God forsook him. He could no longer dream. He could no longer see vision. He could no longer communicate with God. Eventually, Prophet Samuel died. And he needed advice. He needed vision. He needed spiritual guidance. So he had to go to go and meet a sorcerer, a medium, to summon the ghost of Prophet Samuel from the grave. And what happened? When Prophet Samuel goes and appeared to him, and Samuel said to Saul, Why has thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I'm so disgraced. For the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answered me no more, neither by prophets, nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayst make known unto me what I shall do. Children of God, this is a direct warning to all of us enjoying spiritual guidance. King Saul lost that relationship with God and God forsook him because of disobedience. And when God forsake you, you become a wanderer. Like the prodigal son who ended up sharing the same meal with the pigs in the, trine, in the swine trough at times, God stepped into our unthinkable situation to reveal His omnipotence and majestic plan to people, to great Gentiles, as He did to King Nebuchadnezzar. In one such case, God provided His own prophet Daniel to speak to a king who had exalted the wise men of his land. As the King Thomas also taught us in the Bible study class in Daniel 2, 1 to 28. In verse 19 of chapter 2, he said, Then was the secret revealed to Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Then an answer and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed great kings and set up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might, and has made me known unto me, now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. In another situation, God revealed his majestic plan to keep favor of Egypt. As we also read in Genesis 41, 1 to 36. 
Joseph was the man God had prepared to deliver his message. As we read in verse 32 to 41. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Amen. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. And this is Joseph talking. And said, him over the land of Egypt, let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather out the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities, and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, <clears throat> Can we find such a one man as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee in all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Can you imagine? direct from prison yard to the second in command to the greatest king on earth in those days, the king Pharaoh. Is anything impossible for God? No. When God is with you, who can be against you? No. The New Testament records instances of ungodly guidance as well. Oh, yes. Which are those coming from soothsayers from sorcerers, from diviners. Two typical examples we are some were mentioned in the Bible. One was found in Acts of Apostles 16, 16 to 22. We are false prophets or fortune tellers. We are led by evil spirits who could foretell fortune. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, it reads. We were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the fortune and future. He had a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that particular moment, the spirit led her. When our owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews. And they are throwing out our city into uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to ascend our practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rod. And the second example was the encounter again that Peter had with Simon the sorcerer in Acts of Apostles 8 9 to 11. Describe Simon. Simon was also a believer who had the message and he believed he was baptized but he was a rich doctor and people respected him and then when Peter went there now to bless the people he saw Peter through laying hand of hands the people were receiving the school of the Holy Ghost so he went to Peter and said, Peter, I beg you, this is money. Send that gift of the Holy Ghost to me. Now whoever I put my hand, they too will receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, for some time, 
A man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people. And deceiving the people until his end came when he offered to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit from the Apostle Peter. As we read in Matthew Apostle 8, 18 to 23. And when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the Apostle's hand, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of the God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. We do still have them all over the world.